from the heart of Hollywood, California, at the Improv Studios, it's time for the Nighttime Show with your host, Stephen Kramer Glickman. Tonight, our guests include our head writer, masculine Matt Walker, me, also equally masculine Mike Black, our special guest, the great producer of the Brady Bunch television show and movies, writer on the A-Team, Baywatch, Alice, The Love Boat, and many, many more, the incredible Lloyd Schwartz. And now, the man who just can't get it right no matter how hard he tries, put your hands together for the succulent Stephen Kramer Glickman! <laughs> yeah! Yes! What is going on? That was... That's a great intro. Nominal, sir. One of the best we've ever had. That was an amazing intro, uh, Mike. It felt really good. Really? <laughs> no. You're, you get better and better with everything. You know what? We were we were shooting yesterday. We were shooting green screen footage yesterday. Yes. <laughs> to give you an idea, um, we were shooting in a green screen stage above an aquarium factory. Okay, I don't even know how that's a thing. But it was like it was in a in a uh, an Armenian television studio that had gone out of business. Is yes, what yes. we were shooting. However, in. the parking lot was full anyway. Yeah, yeah, the parking lot was full. It was just it was a complete and total complete fucking nightmare. Uh, but um, I said to Mike at one point, I go, "Hey, Mike, can you do like an intro for me where you, where I say where you say something like, uh, oh, Stephen Kramer Glickman's the greatest uh, host ever." Like this. I just like some bullshit, and you, what you came up with was <laughs> a bajillion times better. You're such, a, you're so good. Great. You're well, so good at what you. you do. Thank you very yeah. much. And you're getting handsomer every day. Oh, stop it! I know, <laughs> I know. Um, guys, we we have no time to spare. We yeah. have uh, the man here, the man himself, uh, the legendary. <sighs> Speaking of handsomer every day, I, yeah, seriously, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Lloyd Schwartz is here. <laughs> Yes, it is a pleasure to be here. Yeah. Wow, I mean, hearing all this bullshit for you. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Lloyd Schwartz from the legendary. I mean, the Schwartz family. Your whole multi generations of just television masterpieces, including yeah. your kids, are yeah. also creating television masterpieces right. as right. well. That's yeah, right. we're stuck in this. <laughs> Where did this? How did this all start? Was I, I know that your father Sherwood Schwartz, who right. created uh, Gilligan's Island and right. lots of other amazing television shows. How? Uh, did he have somebody that was like before him? Like, was is it been going on longer than that? Uh, his older brother, his older brother Albert. They started writing. Uh, he was writing the Bob Hope radio show. Wow! Wow! Yeah, and then uh, my dad uh, Sherwood was going to medical school, and uh, he he uh, was offered a job by Bob. He was writing jokes in his you know for money, five bucks a joke for Bob Hope. Yeah, and then uh, when when uh, uh, he didn't get into medical school, he was pre med, and Bob Hope said, "Come work here." And then he started working in 1937, 1938 on the Bob Hope radio show. And then World War II happened, and he went on and did shows for the troops overseas. Mm -hmm. And then came back and did more radio and was like for Danny Thomas and the Beulah Show and Alan Young and a whole lot of uh, radio, R.C. and Harriet. And wow. then, and then uh, television started. And then I had another uncle, too. And uh, they were all working for Groucho Marx and for Milton Berle and for... Uh, um, all those, all those uh, heavyweight uh, comedians in that time. And then um, television started, and Dad started working on uh, I, Mary Joan. Wow. And that's where he met Jim Backus, who mm -hmm. worked on that show. And then after that, it was uh, my favorite. No, then it was uh, Red Skelton. Mm -hmm. yeah. He did Red Skelton for eight years. And then My Favorite Martian. Um, Great show. Yeah. yeah. And then he created Gilligan. So I mean, Jim Backus uh, was yeah. a, was a big part of of that show of Gilligan's Island. Oh yeah, right, right. right. So uh, did he know the other cast members as well from other no. projects? No, he didn't the... know them at all. It was all wow. just casting. Wow. Um, I recommended uh, 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 Bob Denver because mm -hmm. really? I was, yeah I was a big fan of Dobie Gillis. And, oh yeah, yeah. That time, uh, Dad didn't know who didn't ever watch Go Dobie Gillis. Said, you got to <laughs> sign this guy, and it was supposed to be uh, Dad wanted uh, Jerry Van Dyke. Wow. Oh, that would have been a completely different show. That's right. And Jerry Van Dyke had a choice between Gilligan's Island and My Mother the Car. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a clear choice. <laughs> right, of course. <laughs> yes, yes. So, so uh, every time I think of how Dog with the Blog is the stupidest sounding show I've ever heard of, I have to remember that there were shows like My Mother the Car. Right. Back yeah. in the day. Yeah. My Mother. 
<laughs> There's a long yeah. tradition of weird shows about <laughs> stupid premises for decades in this business. They're, yeah, yeah. yeah they're really Mr. Ed, well. Gil- that, Gilligan yeah. was kind of stupid itself. I mean, the, I mean, the concept. I remember my yeah. dad came up with it one night, and he turned to my mother who was asleep, and he said, "I've got it, I've got it." <laughs> and he tells her this story of Gilligan. My mother said, "Just go back to sleep." <laughs> <laughs> well, think of that. It's like the professor can invent everything in the world except a stupid antenna to broadcast the message back out. Like they can get radio broadcast in. He just right. can't send anything out like but he can make anything else in the world it's like but then there wouldn't be a show that's right if yeah he could do that the, the show would be oh this show was one episode and then all right we're done that's it i found well, out and people my- still believe that up till today with lost yeah you know, so, <laughs> yeah well i'll tell you, you know. how gullible people are well uh, after the show was on a few weeks uh the i think somebody from the coast guard called my dad and said i have to have a meeting with you and he brought a bunch of telegrams and he said look at this <laughs> and it was telegrams from people saying we can do all these things we can help people all around the world but we can't get Seven people off of an island. Something good <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, yeah. Let alone the sound man and the you know yeah, yeah. the camera guy. The yeah. camera guys. Yeah. <laughs> were you around for a, for how how old were you when, uh, when I was in high school? I was fifteen. I worked on it a couple of days. Yeah. I held the cue cards for uh, Jim Backus uh, when they did the musical with the you know. Oh, okay. Yeah. Phil Silvers got on the island and the <laughs> musical oh, Hamlet. Yeah. yeah. So I that was my first thing. And so then, yeah. when you were fifteen. Yeah, hanging out at Gilligan's Island. I got a question for you: yeah. Ginger or Marianne? Yeah, man. Well, it's, it's Marianne. I mean, when we <laughs> no. did Rescue from Gilligan's Island, I played the guy who waited for her for fifteen years. On the <laughs> <island>. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So there's yeah. the answer. There you go, Marianne. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, she got five times the fan mail anybody else on the show. Wow. Wow. Yeah, and the reason was she was the normal one. Everybody mm-hmm. yeah. identified with her. So. Sure. Yeah, she was. Attainable. The most down to earth. I mean, because like the professor's kind of nerdy and the Howells were, of course, you know, snooty and rich right, and right. Gilligan was a dope and, you know, the skipper was kind of blustery and, and the bully. And writing fan mail. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it makes yeah, sense. Yeah. But yeah. I guess Ginger was more just too glamour. Unattainable. Unattainable, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, they, they, they all thought like, I could get Marianne. If yeah. I was on an island... Now, I see, could get Marianne if I was lost uh, on a stranded on an island for five years. Is I could the show get supposed Marianne. to go this way? I didn't know that we what he's, he's often do these fantasy. Things. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. No, this is really. I just got VR goggles. Yeah, like, no, I know it's, it's a very that you know what we were just talking about the this uh, before uh, you know, on the drive over here is oh. uh, it, things are getting so weird in television right now and in, and in, and in entertainment. Um, we both he got uh, virtual reality goggles where you put them <laughs> you put them on and then you can watch things in in all around you 360 it's mm-hmm. like super weird so i got the same ones as I, got, I immediately bought the same ones that he got right and i'm so like now, now you're in his fantasy now yeah. i'm in his fan and i can see him yeah. i'm like what are you doing in my thing why are you over there it's i just feel like it's getting weirder and weirder like when yeah. when you were starting out and did it did it feel like uh television was getting like stranger it was like things were were getting different and if you if you feel like it's gotten like it's changed over time like how oh, has it changed oh, oh I, well I, I i've written books on this a television you know how what it has become and 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 where it went i mean when i was starting i was the youngest producer in television by the time we did brady bunch so i was i was producing that show and there was three, how old were you when that was happening i was 25 oh my wow. god yeah wow. Yeah, so uh, you know, we would there was three networks, and we were getting thirty million, you know, thirty shares. Now they get four or five shares, so yeah. it's it's wow. it's very it's, you know it's so different. Um, and he, and you're, you're your own programmer now. You you know every television is going to be a smart TV. Or there won't be a difference between your computer and your TV. You'll you'll set what shows you want to watch, and Netflix and all that stuff is on its way. It's pointing the way toward where it's going to be. We're not there yet. Yeah, right. but it's going to be all that with all that virtual yeah, everything on demand and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's very exciting. It very is exciting. It, it, I think it's exciting, and it also uh, kind of can be a, like sometimes you watch shows on NBC and you're watching like a, a comedy, and yeah. uh, and you're like, I have a tough time finding a comedy on NBC. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you and me both, man. Yeah. And I think the reason that is is because there are so many channels and there is so much programming out there that uh, the really really funny people and there it's not like. There isn't a billion funny people in the world. There are like a a nice, uh, there's a lot, there's a lot of funny people, but they, they get spread out through all these networks and all these other shows and they work on all these other things. And like back then 
you know, you had your show of shows where it's like, yeah. you oh, know, writing like, staff was legendary. Oh my God. Yeah. We're the writing staffs of even uh, the writing staff of Brady Bunch. Legendary. Yeah. Great yeah. people in there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I had a, uh, the first show that I worked on had Imogene Coca on it. And, oh my God. From show show. She was fabulous. She was fabulous. Wow. That's crazy. That's now, uh, how did you go from just being uh, somebody whose father was in the business to making mm -hmm. that decision? Like, Hey, I want to be involved in the TV business or was it just sort of like what you just did? Well, I, um, I, I, while I was in college, I did some stand up comedy and my, my partner was a black Panther. We did, uh, get out of yeah, here. We did, a, we did a team <laughs> called Carruthers and blood. And, oh my and, God. and we, and you know, this is, this is the, the improv. I, I performed here was the Ash Grove. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. And, uh, we did, we were on one night with Brownie McGee and Sonny Terry, who were these black uh, folk singer, old guys and. One was like lame and the other was blind or something, oh and then God. and the other act was uh, Viet Cong atrocity films, and, and <laughs> what? We, and we had to follow. Oh, we had America's to fo a strange time. Sixties, <laughs> sixties. We had to follow that, and it was it was very exciting. And yeah. then um, I wrote um, uh, Love American Style while I was still in college. Wow. And then my dad created this show Brady Bunch, and he said, "Do you want to work on it?" And I said, "No, because you're my dad, and I don't want people to think that I'm doing this because you're my dad." And he said, well, he said, well, you had been a dialogue coach before. I want somebody to be a dialogue coach for these six kids. Mm -hmm. And I was 21, 22 years old. And I said, well, it's not going to be me. And he said, well, who should do it? And he said, well, I said, somebody who's young. And he said, well, you're young. And he said, so I said, somebody who's been a dialogue coach before. And he said, well, you've been a dialogue coach before. <laughs> and he said, somebody who has an English degree and, you know, works with and has been a performer. I said, okay, okay, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll do it. And they gave me these six kids. And they said, here, and I, oh I, I could God. work with him any way I wanted. He never gave me any direction about it. And then at the end of that year, I said, I don't want to do this anymore. I said, I don't want to be a dialogue coach for kids. I want yeah. to, he said, what can you do? I said, I can be an associate producer. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, I can't do that. And so he made me a production associate, which was the same job <laughs> with same job, different, different right. title, title and yeah, less right. money. Yeah. And so. I did that, and then about seven episodes in, I said, I don't understand this. Uh, they didn't hire an associate producer. I'm doing the same job. Uh, I want that. He said, well, you just had to prove yourself. You have. Now you're an associate producer. Yeah. And they, they, then they gave me a chair, you know, and everything. <laughs> That's now you best. can sit down. And then at the end of that year, I said, I don't want to just keep doing this. And they were Because, first of all, the, the studio was sending me out as a, dialogue coach for kids on other shows. Oh, okay. And I, that's not what I wanted to do. And so I said, well, and then I want to direct. And so he said, okay, you can direct episodes. And so I directed episodes and then I was a producer and then I was an executive producer. Oh my God. And so I was doing that and everybody, there was no youth, premium on youth in those days because I was, uh, everybody was 50 or something mm -hmm. and I was 25 and I was telling everybody what to do. <laughs> and uh, it never seemed odd to me. Yeah. But um, that's just the way it works. So. Well, let's take a, we got to take a walk through this cast okay. because uh, each person in this cast is a legend all into their own. So, okay. Uh, okay. let's start with uh, with Bobby Brady, Mike Look and Land, Look and Land, yeah. Look, Look and Land, Look and Land. Right. All right. Tell me about this kid. Well, he was he was the only kid who was going to be in the show, whether it was kids with dark boys with dark hair or boys with, boys with blonde hair. It depended upon how we cast the parents. Right. So he was the only crossover. And he was, he was the most naturalistic kind of kid. And he was also sh very short. We had this um, psych that went around the thing, which was, you know, I don't know, you probably didn't realize this. The backyard was actually inside. You probably get it because oh. of the plastic grass. Yes. But um, sure. so this, this, this thing came down behind and everybody else, and he could walk right underneath it. But everybody else <laughs> would bang their heads on this. And I started putting just a knock, I mean, a, you know, a notch every time that somebody banged their head. <laughs> and then he was very proud when he was tall enough to actually hit the thing hit with it. his head. Oh, you know, so. my God. So you, you mentioned that he was part of a cast that could have gone either way. Now, did you yeah. have a separate cast of kids yeah. that you were going to use if you cast different adults? Yeah. Yeah, wow. I don't remember their names or who Did they are. Did any of them go on to be something else in the business we would have recognized, or you don't remember? It? I, I could. I wish I could come up with something really funny now to tell <laughs> yeah. you who they become. One of them became governor. Of like a, a, no, I don't know. Exactly. Right, 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 right. Exactly. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. I don't really remember. That. Actually, I wasn't part of the original casting because I only joined the show after. After the pilot, I was mm -hmm. still in college at the time. Such an interesting show, too, because like with Modern Family yeah. now being such an enormous hit, that was really the first Modern Family because people kind of look at Brady Bunch and they go, "Oh, it's you know, it's like it's like it's so cheesy. It's like so yeah. like everyone's like it's like everything always works out in the end." Yeah. But 
uh, the basis for the show was two divorced or two widows with right. yeah. mm-hmm. with their own kids and that merging two merging families. together, and that like was a huge huge deal at the time. It was a very big deal. It was a very yeah. big deal. Dad came up with it because they saw a news art, newspaper article in the Times that said every uh, divorced couple that get that remarries somebody, they're bringing children from their other from their other uh, yeah. husband wife situation, and he said this is fantastic for a show. And he ran. He ran. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he says he ran <laughs> right to yeah. the to the writers guild to register this immediately because he thought every writer in the world would have seen that and got this idea. <laughs> and then it was turned down everywhere mm-hmm. <laughs> un- until the movie Yours, Mine, and Ours came out because that was a Henry Fonda, Lucille Ball, which had a bunch of kids in it with a similar premise. And the oh, network wow. said, "You know something." Didn't sure which words have an idea like this, and then they brought him back, and we did the show. Had he wow. already done? Uh, he had done. He had done Gil- Gilligan's yeah. Island at yeah. that point. Yeah. What other shows had he? Uh, did he? W- w- was Gilligan's Island Brady like the two? That's his two biggest hits. That's but the two biggest hits. that you know, hey, they're I know there's a the top five them. shows in the history of television, so it's hard to get yeah, bigger. Than that. It's hard to get bigger than that. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, hey, real quick thing before we continue, uh, you know, um, it's such a great, it's so great having such wonderful guests on the show, but I really, you know, um, uh, want to take a second away from talking to our guests to just talk about uh, something really cool that just happened. I just had a fireball moment, Mike. I don't know if you... Oh, that's great. Yeah. Another yeah. fireball moment. Yeah, that's great. Just, just recently, I, you know, I've been having these uh, and they're just fantastic, they're you know? Just- Crazy stuff happens. Yeah, like sometimes you drink fireball whiskey. When you drink fireball whiskey, everything just gets heightened. We have a lot of fun. You know, mm-hmm. when we do the nighttime show, we give away, you know, uh, you know, fireball whiskey to the first hundred people that show up to our mm-hmm. show. And uh, everybody has such a great time. So after the last nighttime show, I had had a couple shots of fireball mm-hmm. whiskey and I'm wandering down the street uh, on down Melrose mm-hmm. and uh, I'm having a really, uh, a really nice time just kind of wandering and it's not, it's late. It was late. You know, cars are kind of zipping by and i'm just you know it's la la baby you know I'm, I'm, i've had a couple of drinks so i decided to call uber and i'm sitting there waiting on the side of the street for my uber to come and uh, instead of an uber um a, P- a pegasus showed up a pegasus a yeah. winged pegasus a winged pegasus a winged is it winged or winged, winged. Was, was that your winged uber? like you were gonna ride winged. it home are you saying winged or winged 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 pegasus, pegasus. arrives it's all white and glittery. Mm-hmm. It's got these gorgeous wings, sure. and I and I was like, uh, "Hey, I called for I called for an Uber, but are you the funny guy from TV? Y- hey, you're yeah. the funny guy from TV. Wow, hey, it's so it's so great to meet you, Pegasus. How cool! Oh, we've met before. We have. We've always known each other, but I only come out when it's fun. Oh, wow. Well, I'm having fun. Are you having fun? Oh, we're going to have even more fun. You want to drink some Fireball whiskey with me, Pegasus? Fireball is in my heart. Yay. Yes. Yes. I'm opening it. Ah, pour it down my throat. There you go. Mm. Oh, wow. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, it's so good. Oh, oh yes. Oh, yes. I love it. I love it. Oh, oh. Yeah. Wow, this is amazing. Hey, do you no, want No Uber, let's can, fly. Can, do you mind let's if I get fly. on your back and I fly with you? Yeah, let's fly to the Pacific Ocean. Oh, well, I got to go to Hollywood, but okay. I get on I got I got on the I got on the uh I got on the Pegasus and uh and um I was too I was too fat. <laughs> However, I gotta I gotta say, super nice, mm-hmm. way nicer than sounded very pleasant. Yeah, it was, sounded like he really enjoyed the Fireball whiskey. He yeah. really did. He had a really great time with the Fireball whiskey, and like almost an unsettling amount of enjoyment. Do you feel yeah. bad about putting him in the Pegasus Hospital? Um, I well, I felt trying to sit on. Him. I felt like a little bad. Um, mm-hmm. but you know, he's you know he was a really he was real sweet and um. You know, I made a new friend, and that's yeah. what Fireball Whiskey is all about. Is sometimes Absolutely. you make a new friend mm-hmm. when you go out at night, have some shots of Fireball Whiskey. You never know what's going to happen uh, because you, you may just have a Fireball moment. A Fireball moment is a great moment. All right, back to the show. All right, let's uh, let's jump. To, what about Susan Olson? Can we talk about uh, Cindy Brady? Um. Yeah, well, uh, Susan, by the way, the lisp was real. We didn't mm-hmm. force really? her to do that. No, 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 that was real. And Dad fell in love with her right away. He, that was the first one he cast because he she came in and was auditioning and telling a story about gun smoke. 
<laughs> <He's> t- <laughs> she, she was on gun smoke. And I think that just, that, that's why he hired her right away. She's probably the smartest of the kids. And she, toward the end, she was really resenting the fact that she wasn't treated as, as more adult than they were and mm-hmm. uh, than she was rather. And, uh, but we're, you know, I'm still close with most of them. The only one, you know, so. that's, that brings us such an interesting thing. Like on, on, uh, like were were these kids like did were there points where they fought with your dad or fought with you or fought with any was there ever like uh heavy tensions on set about like getting you know getting paid better or fighting or things like that was that there a thing? there was um t- their last year was not really pleasant because they they brought in a manager who said you kids are the stars of the show and uh, I'm going to re- represent you and they all and there was became f- factions and it was not really, that really was, we never got past that until the reunion movies. Wow. And then they actually functioned like a real reunion. They came back and everybody, you know, said, oh, we're sorry that we'd messed up like that and stuff. Yeah. Were they split over how they felt about Cousin Oliver? <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, that was, uh, that was kind of a network thing because they were talking about actually having a kid and. Uh, you know, as the show, it, I'm really p- happy that the show didn't last more than five years. If you take a look at like uh, Happy Days, yeah. I mean, yeah, gets... after like Ron Howard left, the show was about somebody who lived over the garage of people of yeah. a friend that he wasn't there anymore. And some, I, mean, I don't know what the That's whole... the show where they invented the phrase jump the shark from. That's right. That's yeah. the one. Yeah, right. I mean, that really was. Yeah. Because he literally. He literally jumped a shark on a yeah. motorcycle. But poor. Uh, was he on a motorcycle or was he jet skis? Was he oh, jet skis. Jet skis. Yeah, jet skis. Yeah. <laughs> I worked on that. I was a uh, network executive on Happy Days, Laverne Shirley, Three's Company. What's happening? Get out of here! Yeah. Oh, Three's Company was my favorite show. Yeah, uh, as such a great show. But I oh. watch that. It's on every night at yeah. uh, midnight on Antenna oh. TV, and I watch it pretty much every night because I watch the Tonight Show at eleven, and then I watch that one at midnight, and then I watch mm-hmm. Dear John at one because I'm up late. <laughs> but <laughs> this is a sad life you have. Isn't it? <laughs> it is pretty sad. But I gotta say, Three's Company. <laughs> for uh, for what we think of as being a sex comedy, nobody ever has sex on that show. It's like almost yeah. like they're all thinking of it as like this taboo and they're always joking about it, but nobody's right. ever actually doing it. Mm. It's weird. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I'll tell you, I made two significant changes. I worked on the first six of those and I thought this was, um, and I was, I was the first person to have gone from being a producer to working at the network. Every, a lot of times that goes the other way. You get a job. I mean, you get a, a, yeah. a, a commitment after you leave a network. But I wanted to see what the network was like. So I'm assigned to this show. And I go to the first reading. And I said two things. One, I said, there's this guy named Larry who comes in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, who is he? And they said, well, he's Jack's friend. And I said, well, why did he come in? He said, well, that way Jack has somebody to talk to and tell about <laughs> what's going on with these girls. And I said, no, no, I get that. But who is he? I mean, nobody exists in life as somebody else's yeah. friend. I said, I don't care if he's a, a used car salesman and he's coming in to tell people how he unloaded this Buick or something. And the next day I went to the next reading and it said, and Larry, like, the used car salesman. And I didn't even mean that. <laughs> wow. Yeah. But that added a lot to his character. I That's think, right. It sort yeah. of set up who he was as a sort of like sleazy guy. That's and right. All that. That's right. Yeah. And then, yeah. And then the other thing I said, now I'm trying to understand this after the first reading. I'm trying to understand. See, there's this guy, Jack Tripper. He lives with these two girls mm-hmm. and he's chasing Chrissy around. And yeah. then Janet is there. Yeah. I go, I've never, I mean, I should be so lucky to live with two girls. But if I was living with the two girls, I would be flirting with both of them. Right. Because the other one ain't going to sit around while that's mm-hmm. going on. And they say, yeah, so they made that change. So. Wow. What yeah. about the Furleys? Can we talk about the Furleys? Well, I was there before It was the that. Ropers. The, the ropers. ropers. I'm so yeah. sorry. Okay. It was the oh, Ropers, yeah. Somebody punched me in the face. Oh, that's all right. Mike, Norman Mike fell. don't you fret. <laughs> they were, they were, he Michael, was, get me later. He, I know this. I wasn't there at the time, but I know uh, Norman was terrified if they took him off of that show and put him in it another show, <laughs> yeah. right, which was very successful for about a week. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. it did launch Jeffrey Tambor's career. That's true. Except yeah. he wanted to make sure he could get back on Three's Company, and they said, <laughs> oh, sure. And that didn't happen. No. No. Yeah. Oh yeah, I love. Well, he it. came back for one or two episodes because I've seen him where he <laughs> okay. comes back, but it's just like little one-offs where he came back and oh, had really? to check out the building. Didn't and- they? I think I, I had always heard that they had put out a casting looking for a Don Knotts type to oh, really? replace him, yeah, and then Don happens. Knotts was like, "What about me?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They were both so great, like Furley and Roper as characters. Like for me, they're the yeah. best things in the show. They really were, and Roper was so he was so. Now awful. that would have been a spinoff, Furley and Roper. Furley and Roper <laughs> solving yeah. crimes. <laughs> 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 well, 
Well, I went to high school with John Ritter. Mm-hmm. He's a very nice guy. Very talented guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. Very cool. His physical comedy on that show was right. just amazing. And it was like every episode. That's right. He, he was put through the ringer physically yeah. and, and nailed it. You yeah. know? He was very gifted. And whenever, when every time they were trying to put together new half hour comedies, they always, we need a John Ritter type. And there were not very many John Ritter types. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I remember yeah. Chevy Chase was getting a lot of credit at that time for yeah. his physical comedy. And I was like, this other guy's nailing it. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. just it was very good. Every time, you know. Yeah. yeah. You know, when I first moved to LA, Mike, my, uh, my I, I moved in with two girls uh-huh. and uh and i was such a big fan of three's company i was like that's why i wanted to do it and i moved in with these two gorgeous beautiful women right and and, uh, and, uh, and i would walk around in my in my big fat belly hanging out and my little <laughs> underwear and i walk around come and knock on a door and, <laughs> and these two girls would be like Oh my God! When is he moving out? Like they <laughs> hated me. It was, it was three. Now here, here's here's. It was definitely company. You know, in the opening of that show, when the <laughs> it was a crowd. It's on the beach, and yes. there's that heavy that beautiful girl with dark hair is walking away on the beach. Yeah, and he there. turns around and crashes. That's the bike. actually um, uh, Suzanne Summers. Also, they put a black wig on her. Didn't what? Oh, really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Interesting. See, Look that show this. always made me want to go to the zoo. A weird thing about that show <laughs> is. In in the finale, like it, it ended very quickly. It was weird because like Janet gets engaged like three episodes before the end of the show, and then she's yeah. married three episodes later. Like it's like that right. quick that storyline. But then Jack meets the his future fiance or living girlfriend. Mary, like yeah. like the second to last episode is when they introduce her, and at the end of that episode, he asks her to marry him, and she says no, and then they go. <laughs> like right after like this heavy moment it goes to like a cheesy theme closing theme and you're like this is one instance where the music just doesn't work for the show at all because like they never had cliffhangers on that show except for that one episode <laughs> to be continued yeah. it, it was like, oh, like a so... very special three's company oh god that's yeah. so great well, they kill off a ca- i mean i've been i've been on shows where they kill off a character and how are they going to cover that you know how they- yeah <laughs> And it's usually so awful. Now that dad's gone, hi, how kids? How are you? <laughs> yeah, oh, what the my hell? Lord. Yeah. Um, have you ever been on a show where they've replaced a character? Like um, The Brady Bunch. Oh, yeah. We, Brady Bunch, they replaced- Did uh, you replace the father? Or no, I'm thinking of- No, no, no that's Bewitched. Bewitched. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to punch you in the face punch after the, the show. Face, man. Yeah, yeah, no, you're in that a lot was, of trouble. That was Dick uh, York was replaced Dick York by Dick, Dick Sargent. Sargent. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. What about uh, what about Christopher Knight? Let's go back to Brady Bunch for a second because yeah. we have we, there are a lot <laughs> Chris, of Brady Bunch fans. Yeah, okay. Well, Chris, Chris is probably the closest to me because right. I was always a, I'm a middle son, and so I always identify with Chris, and he's probably my closest friend from that group now. Oh. He's I I go also to most of their uh, weddings, and, and then they're <laughs> – then when they get married again, I go to that too. And, <laughs> like that. and Chris, I think, is the champ in that way because I think he's into three or four, three okay. now, something like that. Oh yeah. And I remember he was gonna he was gonna marry this girl, Adrian. Yeah, we know, we know yeah. Adrian. Right. Okay. Adrian Curry. Yeah. Yes, and so because they were, and I actually I could rec- recommended Chris for this reality show. What was it? You know, like Surreal Life or oh, something. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah. And because I was doing a reality show, and somebody, the producer of that show, said, "Which of the Brady kids we should go on that?" I said, "Well, Chris Knight is the only one I would put on there." So oh, I put him on, and they had sketch set the show up where there was this hot girl model, mm-hmm. Adrian, and there was this hot guy model. But I don't know who he was. I didn't see the show, and then. Um, she decided to go for Chris. Yeah. And so Chris, you know, he's, I don't know, 50 something at the time and she's 23 or 24 and that's everybody's fantasy. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like, and so, uh, he kind of treated it like it was a show. I mean, the relationship and then they got married. They had their own reality show. I remember. Oh, and yeah. Yeah, yeah, my fair Brady. And Chris asked me to go to the wedding, which was going to be in her hometown. I don't know where it was some Illinois or something someplace. And I said, I'm only going to go to the show. I'm only going to go to that wedding. If you need somebody to tell you not to do this. <laughs> <laughs> and so they got Florence to do that. You yeah, know? Yeah. Wow. And she, Florence was on a later season of The Surreal Life. Yeah. I'm, uh, well, the same one with Sherman Hemsley. Oh my God. That show was a terrific, weird reality show. Yeah. 
Like I don't know. I didn't see that. Oh Sherm- God, they did. They did stuff. Do you remember that show? <laughs> I remember the surreal life in general. Yeah, the surreal yeah, they life. Did some, but they did yeah. stuff like uh, having Mini Me uh, on a uh, like peeing in the corner of a house. Yeah, while yeah Mini, Mini Me. Yeah, yeah I think it was on. Time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was great. It was very great and weird television. I, yeah, they yeah. didn't just have him peeing in a house. They, <laughs> yeah, yeah, every week, the whole show. Every week, probably a whole show. Yeah, they really did. Um, yeah. All right, what about uh, Eve Plum, Jan Brady? Okay, well, now she's the only one I'm not still in, mm-hmm. in touch with. At she's all. the one who sort of is on the outs with the let's, whole idea let of the us, show, right? Should we let leave us this one? Deal, no, no, let us deal with the, the way the show was created. It was these six kids, and we didn't have personalities for them. And this was very, and dad approached it this way. He said, let's the kids, let the kids be themselves. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So they basically were themselves in front of the camera. Now, if you think about Jan Brady's character, she always didn't want to be part of the group. Mm -hmm. She was always put upon by everything. And that's Eve. I mean, she wants very little to do it, unless you give her a lot of money, and then she comes and back and does some kind of reunion thing. And so that was was her. So I I think she's in Los Angeles somewhere. I haven't talked Mm -hmm. to her much. Oh. You know, she's a nice enough person, but sure. you're, you know, look, I've never had to do what these kids have had to do. They haven't, they spend their entire life going about having people talk to them yeah. about, you know, everyone the old, recognizes the, them. the old days years and years of their life. That's right. And yeah. now they're 60, 55, 60 or something. Mm-hmm. And they're still talking about it. And, um, look, I'm talking about it now, but I walk out the door here. Nobody's gonna know who I am. Yeah. Right. yeah. And that's, you know, you know, I was at an uh, event a couple of months ago and I'm yeah. talking to, uh, I'm, there's a um, uh, like you know you 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 walk around. There's like a a bunch of random people that you see, like different celebrity people and stuff. Mm-hmm. And there was this girl that I saw, and I I was like, oh wow, she's really pretty. And I was like, I I recognize her from something, and I couldn't figure out who it was, but I knew that I knew I knew her from something. And I go, hey, can I ask you a question? And she goes, uh, yeah. And I go, blonde, very pretty, blue eyes. And I go, hey, um. I know that I know you from something and I'm not totally sure what it is. And she goes, well, I've been in a bunch of things. And I go, Mm -hmm. yeah, no, I, I'm sure. Of course. I just mean in particular, is there something that I would recognize you from? Because you, I, I know you right away and I don't know your name or anything. And she goes, "Mm, well, my name's Josie. And I'm like, well, I, uh, is it, was there a TV show that you were on for a long time or something? And she was like, I was on a bunch of TV shows. And I was like, Oh, okay. Well, I I didn't mean to be rude, and she was like, "Charles in charge," okay. and I was like, "Oh my God, you're the girl from she was uh, Sarah Powell on Charles in Charge," mm-hmm. okay. and she was like, "Yeah, I am so fucking tired of." She's like, "It happens every day. People come up, oh hey, uh, how's Charles? Is he still in charge? You know?" Uh-huh. And you're like, "It's she's trapped in that, and sure. she she does not like." that part of her well, you know, career. I wish, she was I, on a lot of other shows, but it's a hard one. I wish people could be comfortable with that. I mean, yeah. I, 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 as I say, I'm, how'd you like to be Maureen and have everybody come and going, Marsha, Marsha, Marsha? Or yeah. how'd you like yeah. to be Dawn Wales? You're talking about Gilligan, people coming. If I had to pick between Marianne and Ginger, who would I be <laughs> yeah. like that? Yeah. I mean, and that's, um, I, you know, you, I, I know a lot of stars that are very gracious about it. And I've right. worked with a lot of them, but a lot of them, it's just, I want my life. Yeah, it yeah. gets tricky. It gets yeah. tricky, I guess, for some people. Um, yeah. What about uh, what about Maureen McCormick? I mean, she was, you know, legendary. Yeah, yeah. She um, was she worked, a nice person to work with? Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's very nice. You know, she had there's and she wrote a book and, and about it and stuff. She had some trouble later on after mm-hmm. after the show. See, we did not keep in touch with them uh, much after the show, and then we we're going to do this reunion movie. So mm-hmm. we're doing this reunion movie and. Was that the Brady Brides? Uh, yeah, yeah. Brady goes to get married, which became the Brady Brides, right. right? And so we're getting ready to do this show, and um, one day she doesn't show up for rehearsal, and her agent, uh, I called her agent, and said, "Where is where is she?" And he says, "Well, we should have lunch." So I said, "Okay," and we go to lunch. He says, "What do we do about this problem?" And I didn't know what problem <laughs> yeah. she's talking. He's talking about. Well, she was heavy into drugs, and I'm not saying anything out of school because she's written about yeah. this, right? And so, uh, and I didn't have a lot of experience with drugs, and I didn't know how to deal with the problem. And then one day she didn't show up again, and so I sent the assistant director and the dialogue coach to her apartment, and they broke down the door, and she was collapsed wow. there, and she had oh OD'd. God. And so I said, "Oh, what do I do here?" So I, I moved her into my house, and mm-hmm. uh, with my my wife and. We got Marsha Brady is living, <laughs> oh is, living down, is living downstairs, and uh, it's pretty. It was pretty awkward. Yeah. But I took her car away, and I took all her privileges away, mm-hmm. and then her parents uh, 
called me up and said, we should talk. And they said, we've been praying for an answer and you're it. How old was she at this time? She was in her twenties. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so, uh, uh, it was at that time, Jerry, who played her husband yeah. in those movies, he was, uh, he was very religious and he brought her to church and at church, she met the guy who became her husband and it kind of straightened her out. Wow. wow. Yeah. Good Lord. Yeah. That's outrageous. Yeah. Um, uh, I've actually met and worked with Barry Williams. Yes. Uh, yes. uh, we worked on a children's charity together and yeah. he sang songs from Pippin. He yeah. sang corner of the sky. Yeah. Well, he, he did that. He did that on Broadway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. He, he's a very talented guy and Barry's the one who's probably embraced it most. Mm-hmm. And he has a, a show he does in Branson now. Um, yeah. Yeah. They made Super a mistake talented. once with Barry and, um, they, they decided that he should do a national tour uh, while the show was on the air, just, mm-hmm. you, know, re, you know, parades and things and stuff. And so I was 22 mm-hmm. and he was 15 and they said, take him around the country. Oh, and I, oh God, are you kidding me? No, no, they, they made a mistake. I mean, I must say. But, oh my uh, wow. God. And we, that must have been lunacy. It was, it was. And women were like, I remember this one parade we were in and, and my job was to sit in the car with them and punch little girls as they ran at the car. You know? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and we'd always, wherever we were flew, we'd, we'd come back with the stewardesses, you know? <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, and oh, I, yeah. yeah. And I remember <laughs> we're in this. You're saying he had a great time. He, yeah. We, I, I introduced him into the ways of the world. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. both probably had a pretty good yeah. time. Yes, yeah. yes. That sounds yes. like a pretty solid yes. move. Now, yes. speaking of the Brady Kid singing, uh, yeah. on my MP3 player the other night on the drive home, I forgot I even had this album on there. I have a Brady Kid singing album, yeah. and they were singing uh, 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 Saturday in the Park by Chicago. But the Brady okay. kids doing it. That's so the song great. that came up. It's bad, yeah. Oh, and it's bad. it's so terrible, but it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's here this was interesting. After the first year of the show, if, if you remember if you're Brady Files, that at the end of the if the first year it had a, a group called the Peppermint Trolley Car sang the title song. Oh right? yeah. And then the next year I went to dad and I said, You know, the kids are the show. And so we ought to have the kids sing this title song. Yeah. And he said, that's a good idea. So we changed the lyrics and say, that's the way we became the Brady Bunch, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so we go to, I go to the, uh, the, I'm not very musical. And we go, I go to the recording session for this song. Sure. And the guy says to me, and so, okay, they're going to sing it. Who's the musical director? And I go, that's me. <laughs> and they go, yeah, but what about the harmonies? And they're not going to be any harmonies. Yeah. And they're going to be kids singing. That's it. They're going to sing yeah. just like mm-hmm. they do. And that was it. And then they did. <laughs> and, and, and then we're getting ready to do the movie, the Brady Bunch movie, yeah. which I produced that. And they said, we want to buy the rights to those kids singing the song and, you know, and pay. And Eve Plum would get money for this. And I go, <laughs> why are you doing any of that? And they, what do you mean? I said, kids sound like kids. Just get these kids to sing. What the hell is the difference? Yeah. That's what they did. <laughs> <laughs> so they did. Genius. Save a bunch of money. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I now, love you, it. You mentioned earlier before we got on the air something else that you created with the kids yeah. Yeah. on the show. And you said before the Brady Bunch whenever they'd go to a commercial, they'd have a deep voice announcer guy right. say, you know, we'll be right back. We'll be right back after these messages. Yeah. Right. Like, oh, do you that. do it, Mike. Yeah, yeah, Mike. We'll be right back after these messages. Right. And now the, for the Brady Bunch was the first show to have the kids do that. And that was just because I thought it would sound friendlier. Mm-hmm. Have, I mean, not that you're not friendly. But <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Okay, so what, so what happened was all other shows now have the, somebody from the cast do it. And that's done not because it was friendly, it's because it's cheaper for the network, so they don't have to pay another actor yeah. to do that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, what about, um, I know that we've talked about Florence Henderson a little bit, but we do have to mention Robert Reed. No, course. we don't. We no, really we don't. don't. <laughs> we, no, we don't want to talk no, about there's, it. No, I, I, I don't know how versed your people in all that, but there's a lot can, of... A lot of stories that he was right. not uh, pleasant. No. Well, we can we can leave that out. Uh, <laughs> no, it's, no. I, 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 I never had a nice conversation with him in, in all those years. I wow. mean, he was just wow. not, a, not a nice not a nice guy. The kids liked him, but because in a sense, he was kind of buying their affection. Sure. Maybe I don't want to get too psychological about no, all of this, man. That's but, cool. Yeah, but that's what I think was going on. And so he, when he had his little blow ups, and he did, and they were pretty cruel. I mean, things he said. The kids had left the stage by that point, so they never saw that side of him. But he wow. took out after my dad. He said terrible things about him, about me. Wow, and it man. was, yeah, it was, it was not a really pleasant thing. And 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 then you know he had his his uh, little predilections in terms of uh, uh, his sexual things. And, uh, which never made any difference to us, you know, but, but, um, I'm, I'm pleased that at this point in his life, uh, at his death, um, 
that people know him as the gay guy who did the Brady Bunch. So that's, that's Jesus Christ. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Fascinating. Yeah. Uh, uh, what about what about Ann B. Davis? Can we talk about Ann? Oh yeah, we're, we're, we were that's very the close. last one from the that we want. Well, no, about. we'll talk about Florence. Got a great story. Oh about Florence. sure, please. Yeah. yeah. No, we're going to talk about Sam the Butcher. What are you talking <laughs> about? <laughs> Sam the Butcher. I love Sam the Butcher. Yeah, you identify with Sam the Butcher. Yeah, I do. I yeah, do. There you go. <laughs> if, if, if it was remade right now, I'd probably play Sam the Butcher. <laughs> but um, Ann B. and I were very close. We were very close. She was a wonderful lady, total professional. Didn't have didn't have a lot to do with the kids. She never had kids, and and uh, she couldn't cook. She has a cookbook out, that, you know, but, <laughs> but she yeah. was always just stirring water yeah. and stuff. And yeah. and in fact, she passed away about a year and a half ago. Mm-hmm. And I I did the I was honored to do the eulogy for her. She was just wow. a, she was a wonderful woman. She was and, very fun to watch. She's always yeah. seemed like she was having a great time. She was known as an owl. And that what it is is if you're doing something funny, it's always good to have somebody watching it. Mm-hmm. And then you cut to them, and she would always have a reaction. Yeah. Her reaction shots were great. Yeah. 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 Oh, wow. What about um? Uh, so what about Florence Henderson? Florence is very different than Carol Brady. Florence is quite a body woman, <laughs> and and <laughs> and <laughs> you can, and she gives in, and well. Um, oh wow! <laughs> I remember I had this experience with her. Uh, we were in Hawaii. You know the Brady Bunch Hawaii episodes. Yeah. Okay. So I don't drink very much. And there was a party after one of the days of filming and um, I'm dancing with Florence and there's these drink called zombies and you're only supposed to have one of these things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm into two maybe or something. <laughs> yeah. And I'm, and Florence, when you dance with her, like she was even on dancing with the stars, but when you dance with Florence, you think you're a good dancer, you know, <laughs> you know, you're dancing yeah. for a while. I don't remember much about the rest of the evening, <laughs> but I do know the next day on the set, Florence said, if I, ever told your father what you asked me to do See? <laughs> oh my now, God. now i have no memory of this <laughs> but i do know that her doctor is now my doctor and we're all good friends and about six months she when she has her checkups he calls up and he says hey lloyd and i said hi david and he says guess who i have in my office i say florence <laughs> and he says yeah and i said is she naked and he says, not yet. And I said, well, call me back when she's naked. <laughs> and, and, then, and then Florence Florence says, ask him about Hawaii. You know, that's what we go. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. That's amazing. <laughs> that's incredible. Yeah, she's um, great. Can we uh, can we jump a little bit? Can we talk to can we talk about A Team? I know that you did. Did you work on A Team? I, I wrote an like, episode, and the reason was one of my uh, old, one of my sons was a big fan of the show. Right. Yeah. And I want, and he wanted. So I, so I figured, okay, I'll write an episode. So I knew somebody was a producer and I had this idea, these things I, I love deep sea diving mm-hmm. outfits, you know, when they walk mm-hmm. around yeah. with the heavy boots and that the, uh, the tubes go up into the sky or the big helmet. Yeah. Yes. Those, yeah. th- I love that. I said, I want to, I want to put Mr. T into one of those. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was my whole ambition was Mr. T because yeah. I also want to know whether the gold would be outside or inside yeah. the thing. Okay. <laughs> right. By the time it got on the air, it was no longer Mr. T. It was scuba diving. And it was a different character, mm-hmm. one of the other yeah. characters. I think they had Dirk but Benedict do it. I don't, I don't remember because I didn't watch, watch, watch the show that much. I found out, though, that Mr. T was claustrophobic and they would oh never go God. to one of those things. Oh, my <laughs> God. That's that amazing. Saying, I love yeah. Mr. T. He's the best. Yeah. yeah. He's the best. <laughs> um, I just like, just going through your like credits that you have online, sometimes you, you okay. run into things where you're like, is this a real thing? Is this a real? So this is one of those, like, is this a real credit? Can we talk about the Let's monsters? Let's talk about yeah. Can we wait? Yeah. Well, I was going to go to Baywatch, but if okay. you want to go monsters, okay. let's do monsters Ooh. real quick because it's right. very cool. Now yeah. you were involved with the reboot of the monsters in the late eighties. Yeah, the monsters today. Right. I yeah. wrote that. I created that. Yeah. And uh, how much uh, of the original cast was back for that? Was that none? None. So and that was my con- a condition because I was I was going to be running the show mm-hmm. and I wasn't going to have any other producers around. Uh, from who did the original, even though I wanted them to, but they wouldn't let me because of Universal and some kind of deals or something. Okay. So I said, I can't have anybody who knows more about the show than I do. Yeah. And I was, I was going to be running it. So, and, it, and I wrote letters to all of them and they were very unhappy because it was many years later and I don't think they would have been age wise, you know? Yeah. And so um, they wrote. And so, and so I, none of them came back and I knew Lee Merriweather from before and John Chuck was a friend of mine. And so we did it, but I didn't want to actually do the show. Because it would, Munsters was a great show. Fantastic. I, yeah, yeah, the yeah. original. And not, not, not the one I did, but the original was just great. Yeah. And so I said, well, um, I'm, not, I'm going to turn it down. So I told them I'm not going to do it. And they said, think about it, because they sold two years of it on, uh, 
I'm in syndication. <laughs> yeah. So I thought about it over the weekend and I said, you know, I've been fascinated by the idea of if you come back after a missing some 20 years, mm -hmm. they went to sleep. I don't remember the concept of the show. They went to sleep in cabinets that grandpa had invented. Right. And they wake up and it's 20 years later. So I had a chance to comment on society. So they were 60s people waking up right. in the 80s. Right, right. Yeah. And so I said, that's a pretty interesting idea. Yeah. So that's what we did. And so then I said, if I can do that, then I'll do the show. And then I did the show. So. Yeah. No, that makes a lot of sense. And it's kind of what you guys did uh, with one of my favorite movies, the Brady Bunch movie, yeah. which yeah. was genius because you took those characters that everybody yeah. loved, you cast them phenomenally. Right. Yeah. I mean, all everybody that was in that movie was... Yeah, uh, they nailed it. God, right. they Just ever nailed it. So, so damn funny. And everybody... Now, actually, can I... Um, I will say this much. Yeah, please. Um, I was not terribly interested in doing impressions like they did. Sure. Right. I wanted Madonna for Mrs. Brady. <laughs> wow. That would have been amazing. Right. Wow. And I said, and they kept saying, well, she's a movie star. I said, yeah, we're making a movie. <laughs> yeah. <You know? laughs> And then I, you know, I, and listen, I did stuff with Shelley Long after. I think she's terrific and it was a way to go and that's how they did it. But I thought if we were going to make a hundred million dollars, if you had Madonna in it playing Mrs. Brady, it'd make $200 million. Right. Yeah. And so that's what I went. So her and like Kevin Nealon or somebody, just something, you know, comedy there. Now Gary, and he's a, he's a friend of mine and he did a fantastic job yeah. and that maybe was the right way to go. But I'm just saying that the history of the It piece. was kind of a breakout for him too. Yes. Yeah. yeah. People, people had never seen him do comedy before. He's a wonderful guy. Wonderful guy. So but funny. the premise was terrific yeah. of that this house just hasn't aged. And well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you this sort of time loop. You know? <laughs> yeah. I, I would, I'll tell you this. Paramount called up and said, we want to do a Brady Bunch movie. And um, I went to dad and I said, look, dad, we don't have a movie. We have six kids in a house yeah. unless we do it as a satire because they were just going to do it straight ahead. Mm -hmm. And so we called Paramount up and he said, we'll do it, but it has to be a satire. And Paramount in its wisdom <laughs> said, we don't care. <laughs> that sounds like, like Paramount. We just want the name. <laughs> they, yeah, they thought. But you know what? The, 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 what are the bins at, at Walmart are filled with movies that didn't work based upon TV shows. Right. Yeah. yeah. It has to be a reason to do it. And now we had a reason to do it, which was a satire. Well, yeah. and what was funny to me is it's in a weird sort of way, they did the same thing with the Adams family yeah. and they're kind of like bookends as movies now where it's like, yeah. they're both about just this strange family. That's uh, like one's completely good and one's completely evil in a weird sort right. of way. You yeah, know? I guess so. Yeah. It, yeah. it was really interesting because I, I remember them coming out within like a year or two of each other and thinking, mm -hmm. oh, they're like the anti of each other. <laughs> and yeah. and I'd never noticed that before. Yeah. You know? No, I haven't either, actually. But I always thought the Munsters was Life of Riley. Because they, oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, because other characters fit uh -huh. those <laughs> yeah. like that. Yeah. 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 Now, for, for one of the Brady reunions, you won a daytime Emmy? Is that correct? Yeah. So yeah. No, I got a nomination. Okay. I didn't Did win. We were nominated... We were nominated against a salute to the 9/11 victims, and I had a oh, feeling well, yeah. I had a feeling we weren't going to win that. You're not going to win that one. Yeah. No. See, but, on IMDb they say that you actually you won that one. So there's a lot of things that are wrong on there. Yeah. 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 What a bullshit website. I was going to ask, ask where you keep your Emmy because I'm curious about that stuff. But I have a place for it. You have a place but for I don't it. Have an Emmy. <laughs> you don't have the Emmy yet. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's great. There's um, still time. There's still time. When the nighttime <laughs> show becomes a television show, we'll get you on and we'll make sure you get one. Yeah, There's you, always stuff, by the way. There's always Brady stuff, Gilligan stuff in the wind. There's about a feature film here or another yeah. TV series. We're always working. It's been we've been in on we've been in the uh, on the air in some ways, sixties, seventies, eighties, nineties, tens, zero tens, and there will be more. There well, will be more. We're doing. We're probably we're finishing negotiations that we did a Brady Bunch musical, very Brady mm -hmm. musical, and that'll be in Vegas. And That's uh, perfect for that town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did it here. It won a bunch of awards. So it was, and well, didn't you guys even nod to a Gilligan's Island movie with the professor being um, Mrs. Brady's first husband? Oh yeah. Well, they yeah. I'm this, you're talking the, about the second Brady movie. Yeah, yeah the oh, second yeah. Brady. I yeah. I didn't uh, want to do that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I you know after the first was a big success and they wanted yeah. to do one very similar and I go no you can't do similer. Yeah. Because it, then if you've done it, then you've done it. Right. And yeah. I, they said, here's the title, and here's the story, and here's the people. And I said, don't tell that story. Don't call it that. And don't, put, <laughs> don't put those people in. I produce right. it. I've yeah. never seen it, as a matter of fact. Oh, wow. Yeah. I won't see that. It's, it's yeah. just, it was the wrong thing to do. I wanted to take the Bradys after the first movie 
and turn them into Abbott and Costello. <laughs> because yeah. and then satirize like the Brady's in Amityville, you mm-hmm. know, the Brady's oh, in yeah. space. Oh yeah, the sure. Brady's. Different sure, that's yeah. right. Spots, yeah. And, yeah, and then you could have fun you with them. You could see everything through their but eyes. But just to satirize them as them had been right. done already. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. That makes mm-hmm. a lot of sense. Well, making sense and talking to studios is very different. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not yeah. imp- it's not important that they make a good movie. I mean, they yeah. have to make their movie. Yeah. Now, you did oh, say that uh, you told us, told me this before the show, uh, yeah. the, the Brady's and Gilligan's Island almost collided. Yeah. Yeah. Fred, Fred Sufferman wanted to do uh, a Gilligan. We did the you know, Gilligan reunion movie. I mean, uh, the, yeah, the rescue from Gilligan's Island. Yeah. And, we, and then that was a huge success. Huge success. Number one movie in two or three years. Wow. And so we did that, and then he said, "Let's do more." And Fred wanted to do the Harlan. No, he wanted to do. Um, let me see the uh, Brady Bunch on Gilligan's Island, but there were two different studios, two different networks. It wasn't going to work. And then he said, "How yeah. about how about the Harl- How about the uh, Dallas Cheerleaders on Gilligan's Island?" <laughs> and we said, "Well, um, no, that's not going to work because the Dallas Cheerleaders were committed to ABC, and it was NBC." Mm-hmm. And and. And then you said, well, how about the Harlem Globetrotters on Gilligan's Island? Yeah. <laughs> and, my, you know, <laughs> so the, and that's how we did that movie. So, <laughs> Wow. Oh, my God. That yeah. movie's so fun to watch, too. <laughs> I mean, I must have watched that 15, 20 times when I was a kid because it was just on all the time. Yeah. It was, it was, it, it was given a, a, it was called the worst title in the history of television, yeah. the Harlem Globetrotters <laughs> on Gilligan's Island. Oh yeah. But, <laughs> It I tells, liked it. it tells there you was what, no surprise what it's about. about it. yeah. Yeah. yeah, I liked it. You know, it's very right. indicative of what you're going to see. Thing, like that movie yeah. was sort of the precursor to Space Jam. You know, yeah. you got like the yeah. basketball team, and you got to mm-hmm. beat them for whatever reason. And there's, you know, robots. Yeah, I robots think, playing basketball. You know, Space Jam was created by the merchandising department of Warner Brothers. Oh, I totally believe They said believe it, they yeah. said they needed oh, a, yeah. they needed stuff to sell, so they made that movie. That's yeah. probably why they're yeah. doing Space Jam too with LeBron James. I've heard that. That's in the works now. Did All you right. see about the newscaster that went yes. crazy? Yeah, I saw that. Oh, that uh, was... some newscaster had big news about Space Jam Two, oh, and yeah. uh, the the, the, an- the anchor the sports guy spoiled it. Yeah, the sports guy was supposed to read it, and then the anchor read it oh. instead of him, and then he was like, we are working together for 30 years, and this is what you do. Like, you stab me in the back, and he's doing this on the air. He's like, you're lucky that I'm friends, that you're friends, what did he say? With my mom. Yeah, you're lucky yeah. that you're friends with my mom. <laughs> and, and then my favorite line of the whole thing, he says, is sometimes you have to choose between a friend of your mom and the honor and dignity of Kron. <laughs> Kron being the station they never, that they were oh, that's But funny. it sounded like some sort of <laughs> angry war <laughs> god that he made up. <laughs> that's so funny. That's so uh, funny. Yeah, that's uh, terrific. Oh, my God. Um, all right, before we wrap up, we do have to talk with you about uh, about Baywatch. Oh, Because yeah. that's... Yeah. Number I mean, one show in the world yeah. for like five years in a row, right? Yeah, Game well, my... changer. My, my cousin created that show. And... Um, we went to see the pilot of it, my wife and I, and we saw this and go, this isn't going to work. <laughs> you know, we said, you're going to jump into water and save somebody every week. That's yeah. really what's going to happen here. <laughs> no way. <laughs> huge, huge hit. And then we, my, my cousin and I were not, we're, he asked, I wrote a couple episodes. Mm-hmm. They did a Gilligan satire. So I wrote that yeah. one. And then there was another funny one about, uh, they said they were going to do another funny episode. They asked me to write that. And that had to do with basketball a beach basketball or mm-hmm. something. So I did that one. And then we would fight about different stuff. And D- Doug is my cousin and, and, and he wanted to somehow get involved with Gilligan and Bray. And, and I didn't want to do that stuff. And we b- argued. And I finally said, look, Doug, other than Bill Gates, I said, no one's made more money off of silicone than you. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, the, the slow motion montages of yeah. Pamela Anderson jogging on the beach oh, yeah. made that the number one. Well, show I'm going to, I'm going to tell you, I, so the, the scripts were 40 pages long. Now a normal hour script is 60 pages long. Right. And so I came up and there was going to be a montage of one of those things. So I write my, I start to write this and they say, what are you doing? <laughs> Just, we do all that. Just, just put down montage, it. you know. Yeah. Like <laughs> montage. Yeah. yeah, there were like two in every episode. It was just yeah. boom, 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 yeah. boom. That's right. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. god. So Hugh, what about uh, uh, Hasselhoff? Oh, he's a good guy. Yeah. I, I met him, you know, a couple of times. Was, I mean, I, I it was it was not my show, so I don't usually go, yeah, go hang sure, around sure. shows. So what? Uh, We've been talking about television a lot. What do you like to watch on television yourself? Like, is there anything out there now that you're like, hey, this is on my DVR? Do you have any guilty pleasures like that? Or Well, I watch a lot of Dodger, Dodger games. Okay, me too. I like that. The Dodger um, channel, by the way, 
fantastic. If you can get the Dodger channel, I get the Dodger. I think it's, it's horrible. It's outstanding. You know, it's, <laughs> it's horrible, except for the, the games. On there. First of all, the Dodgers haven't won since 1988. If I see Kurt Gibson <laughs> hit that home run one more time, I mean, it's to say they keep going back to these highlights. It's like that the, same. the Tommy Lasorda documentary. You oh, know, like that? horrible. Oh, oh, horrible. <laughs> I don't, no, we're allowed to disagree, by the way. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. You're both Dodger fans. It's part of the, the deal. Yeah. 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 That yeah. part's true. That's yes. Part's true. Absolutely. You grew up in Southern California. What else do you watch? What other types of shows? Um, I like, uh, you know, when Kirby Enthusiasm was, I watched that. And uh, um, let me see. Is there anything I specifically tune in to see? Um, n- 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 Netflix. I watch uh, some of Netflix. Of course, I watch Game of Thrones, <laughs> you know. I've, but Game of Thrones is interesting because we watch it and I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> no idea. I don't know who the good guys, the bad guys. Yeah. It makes, but it makes no difference. Every scene is so interesting that it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think if I would sit down and I chart this all out, I couldn't figure it out anyway. That's so. kind of like me with uh, Doctor Who. Like I'm a big fan of Doctor Who and yeah. I watched all of the new version of Doctor Who. Yeah. And then I was like, I don't know why they're doing anything or what's going on. And I had to go back and I rewatched the entire series and I had to watch it twice for me to understand what was going on in the current episode. Yeah, it's like if someone were to quiz me on this show, I would fail, but yeah, right. I am enjoying the hell out of it. <laughs> yeah, it's like I really like it. I don't know why, but I like it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay, that's no, good. I get that. That's good. I get that. Is there, um, are there, were there other shows or things that, that you were approached to work on that you didn't want to be a part of? Um, no, not really. Um, I've been very fortunate in my career where I, I create things and people don't really ask me to work on other shows because they know that I'm creating my own stuff. Yeah. I do a lot of theater, a lot of theater. I've had 34 plays produced. Wow. I have a children's theater with my wife uh, that we've been doing for 30 years, oh the only God. equity children's theater in the city. We're doing a musical in New York in October called The Babies. It's a, I'm directing that and I wrote that. And, um, you know... I do I have a one man show on plays on John Wilkes Booth. Oh that, wow. Yeah, that sounds great. Yeah, yeah. It's played around the country and we're having a new actor who's gonna take it out and it's gonna go out and uh, I've done a lot of historical, a lot of historical writing, a lot mm-hmm. of dramas. I just did a play last year called Classic Couples Counseling about a therapist for Shakespearean characters. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. And so, he's got his hands very full. Cool. Got his hands full with Macbeth, man. Yeah, well my <laughs> wife played Lady Macbeth. Oh, wow. oh, yeah, there's and there's a group therapy scene where everybody's together, Romeo and Juliet and Macbeth and Lady Macbeth. And, <laughs> oh man, yeah, that sounds so good. It was very, really it was, does. Got, it was very funny. We got a lot of good, very good reviews on that. Uh, what are your What are your sons working on these days? Because I know uh, yeah. one of your sons created a show on Nickelodeon, right? Uh, no, a Disney, Disney Channel. Channel. Disney yeah, Channel. he did a, a show there called uh, Mighty Me- uh, Mighty Med. Yeah, Mighty Med. Med. Yeah, and then he was on Lab Rats, and he's got a thing over with uh, Warner Brothers now. And the other son is uh, works in reality programming. Our my kids are fabulous, both of them. Yeah. And uh, you know they say God gives you the kids you can handle. And God looked at me and Barbara and said, "These people can handle nothing." <laughs> 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 That's absolutely amazing. Um, listen, it's been a complete honor and a pleasure to have you in and be able to sit down and chat about you know the stuff that we were obsessed with growing up and that we uh, we grew up watching and you know. Do you have uh, anything coming up that we should be looking out for? Yeah. Oh, let me see. Well, like that baby's musical, we're going to do that in L.A. Uh, I have a movie um, that may go called Viagra Falls It's uh, <laughs> that I wrote. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have another movie called uh, Strudel. It's about a kind of a river cruise. I'm working with Ted Lance from Love Boat on that. Oh, cool. Wow. And uh, We didn't even get to Love Boat. That was one thing I really wanted to ask you about was Love Boat. Well, right. ask, right. Stephen. Well, here's- <laughs> You still have a chance. Where did, where did you film that show? Because, okay. okay, in here's in my brain. I'm going to tell you what's in my brain. My brain oh, no. is- We didn't film it there. Th- this is- <laughs> yes. In yeah. my brain, in my, in my virtual reality Here classes, we go. Okay. I have always, since I was a kid, believed that that show was shot on an actual cruise ship in the ocean yeah. yes. with a bunch of actors and a film crew. Now, I've been on a cruise ship as a grown up, and it was basically <laughs> garbage. Like it was like I went on the I went on a carnival cruise line. Mike, if you ever get a chance, all yeah. the chicken wings you can eat. Uh, yes, I've, I've done. <laughs> but I've but, done a cruise ship. But you just see all the people on the cruise ship who have eaten. All the all the all the yeah. chicken wings they can eat. There's a lot of bloated people there's on day a lot. two. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of it's a it's rough. It's a rough ship, yeah. man. It was like Chuck E. Cheese in the water. It was yeah. bad. 
It was a yeah. bad. Was well, bad you know, bef- before Love Boat, uh, the cruise business wasn't what it is now. I mean, oh, it was yeah, just like I'm all sure. old people on the on cruises, and now they became love and all that. Yeah. And then people went on there and their singles cruises and all these yeah. things. They got it's a whole industry. It was created. By the way, yes, it was filmed on the boat in the ocean for about three episodes a season. Really? <laughs> yeah, for the big ones, and I never got a privilege of going on those. <laughs> yeah, but oh yeah, that was actually out there. But most all of it was inside at Fox. Wow. And that's where, um, yeah. And I wrote, I worked on it as for a year as a story editor and my whole job on on that, uh, for that season, that series was to connect the three stories. There's three stories going on. And when they would pass by in some (laughs) lounge, I wrote that. Right, okay. <laughs> and so that right. was it. And that took me about 10 that's minutes. That's the important of, part. That's 10, the glue. But after, <laughs> I, after I'd been a producer, I mean, this took me 10 minutes a week to do this. You know? and so that, <laughs> that was it. They're yeah. paying me. And then yeah. I never, I never saw, I worked with Aaron Spelling on a couple other things when I was a network executive. And then they asked me to do this show. I never saw him one time. I worked there for really? a year. No, wow. I may have seen him at the back of a parking lot once mm-hmm. and they kept you very separate. <laughs> and so that's, and that was, that was it. But it was a very successful show. Wow. Very successful show. And I remain friends with uh, Ted Lange. Where mm-hmm. he, di- he directed that classic couples ca- counseling play that I was telling you about. Oh, oh wow. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's yeah. so great. Uh, parties at your house must be uh, uh, pretty, pretty, the, pretty, pretty wonderful. Who? Well, not, Thanksgiving. I'm, getting, I'm guessing Thanksgiving. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'll tell you one. When I went, there was a party. At, this is two, I'll tell you it's two. I don't know how much time yeah, we no, have. No, no, oh, yeah. no. It's fine. It's oh, fine, okay. Of course. There's two stories that are really funny. Uh, my parents have parties. And so I was, there was a party and- it was Henny Youngman and Maury Amsterdam were at this party. <laughs> oh my God. And so I'm in the den and it's just me and Henny Youngman and Maury Amsterdam. <laughs> and this is like going 10 rounds with Muhammad Ali. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they're just beating the shit out of me with one joke after another. <laughs> and I couldn't get out of there. It was just, it was the worst experience Every, ever. every vaudeville line that's been oh since my since God. 1917. He shouted at you. Yeah. And the other one, there was a party and... The, you know the actress Anne Francis, Honey West, gorgeous <laughs> yeah. blonde, gorgeous sure. blonde. Okay. Yes. So Anne Francis is at this party, and my uncle called up and he said, uh, "What's going on?" I said, "Well, there's my parents are having this party, and uh, Anne Francis is there." And he goes, "I'm coming over right now." <laughs> <laughs> and I said, "Well, it's just a party. No, I've got to, I've got, we've got to get her out of there." <laughs> and I don't know what he's, you know. And so he comes, back, he drives over from wherever he is, and he comes running in. Where's Anne Francis? And I go, "She's in there." He says, "We got to get her out." <laughs> My father had a crazy aunt Francis and he thought that she was she was at this party. <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. Best story ever. <laughs> Love it. We are at DEFCON 5. We have got to get Aunt Francis out of there. That I love fantastic. this party. <laughs> There's so many small sandwiches. Um, all right. Um, this has been... <laughs> been amazing a great story oh, to end on i know how Perfect. can people uh find if they want to find you or, or look you up or look up your, your your theater how do they how do they find you well the children's theater is a good way to at, at the storybook theater of los angeles okay. and uh it's at theater west so you go to www.theaterwest.org and you'll find a link to the children's theater we're there every saturday at one 30 years we're doing uh, sleeping beauty right now yeah, Theater West is no joke. That has been around for a long yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. We've been yeah, Theater West has been there over 50 years and we've been doing the Children's Theater 30 years. We're the only equity children to see theater in the city and we've done uh, 18 different plays. Does that wow. do, can kids be in plays there that are not yeah. in equity or do they have to be in equity? No, the, it's it's adult actors for the kids. Like with oh, Sleeping Beauty yeah. like for example, we bring the kids into it. They have to try to wake up Sleeping Beauty. Oh, oh wow. nice! Yeah, it's it's yeah. Right. so it's like an interactive. Yeah, oh, yeah, and wow. all musicals. And How it's, fun it's, is that? It's great fun. That great sounds fun. amazing. Yeah. Um, that's wonderful. So check that out, um, Matt. Where can people find you? Uh, look me up at funnymat.com or if you were annoyed by me, go to mattwalkersucks.com and let me know. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people don't like you, but we like you most of the time. Yeah. Uh, Mike, what about you? At Mike Black Attack on all social media. Yes, uh, I'm at Stephen Glickman, S T E P H E N Glickman on all social media as well. Uh, the nighttime show is a, a monthly show live here at the Hollywood Improv in Los Angeles. Uh, make sure to uh, check out the calendar for for future dates. Thanks so much for listening to the show. Don't forget to subscribe and leave comments on the uh, on the the iTunes channel. Uh, I love you guys. Thanks for listening to the nighttime show. Oh, come on.